everyone, Brett McHare from theartofmanliness.com. All right, in today's video, Carl is gonna show us how to grill the perfect steak. Okay, we're ready to cook the steak. Our grill is screaming hot. We've got our three zone fire. Everything is perfect. We've got these great cuts of meat. Now we're gonna season them and we're gonna cook them. So the first thing I like to do is drizzle them with a little bit of olive oil. This one is a, a rosemary garlic olive oil. You can just use plain extra virgin olive oil or you can use something with a little bit of flavoring and seasoning. Just gives you one more element. And then we're pretty simple. You see all these people with these elegant spice rubs and all that. Look, the meat is the star here. Don't overshadow the meat. We do it simple with salt and pepper and be liberal. Be liberal with your seasonings. These are big cuts of meat. And we always like to use fresh ground pepper. You can use the stuff out of a can. It's just not as good. We like these. Now we're gonna flip it and we're gonna do the same thing over again on the other side. And again, this oil is gonna help us create really good grill marks. We're gonna talk about that in a minute when we get over to the, over to the grill, how to get those, because that's really what's gonna make, impress your friends, and make you look like a really good professional grill master. Okay, now we've got our charcoal grill. We're gonna prepare it and get it ready for our steaks, again with our three zone fire. But we want good grill marks, so there's a lot of ways to oil your grill. You can do it with a paper towel, dip it in oil and stroke it over. But you can also do it with spray. You have to be a little careful over that hot part of the zone of your fire. And now we're ready for our steaks. Start with this big porterhouse. Then our rib steak. Then our filet. Now, Everybody has seen that guy that the minute he puts it on the grill, he wants to touch it. He wants to move it around. He wants to, if you do that, you're not gonna get any grill marks. At this point, you are not the star of the show. Your grill is the star of the show. So you've got it on there. Let's lower your grill down and let's let it do the work for a few minutes and create that good caramelization from those salt, that pepper, and get those good grill marks on your steak. Okay, we're gonna start the same process again on the gas grill so we can get the same beautiful steaks, the same beautiful grill marks, the same thing on a gas grill. We're gonna show you how to do that right now. We're gonna take an ordinary paper towel and some extra virgin olive oil. We've got our grill and we're just gonna go back and forth over the grate and make sure it's good and oiled over all the zones. This will help to create good grill marks, good caramelization. You're gonna get a little bit of flare up, but that'll die down quickly. Now we'll get our steaks. We'll put them on, and just as before, that's what you wanna hear. That really hot, scorching fire. Now you don't wanna to touch it. Just don't touch it. Don't let the flame scare you. Just close it down and let the grill do its work. Okay, it's been about five minutes. When you're looking at doneness on steaks, a good rule of thumb is for every inch of thickness is about 10 minutes to get it to a medium consistency. So I know there's everybody out there tell you, touch your nose, that's a medium, or touch the palm of your hand. You know, there's two ways you can get it. You can go off that theory or you can go and invest in a really good instant read thermometer. These are worth their weight in gold. Why guess when you don't have to? So we're ready to turn our steaks. Again, these have been on the hot part of the grill. And now we're ready to uh, let them finish cooking. Okay, our steaks have been cooking about 10 minutes. So we're ready to take them off the grill. You can see we got that good caramelization. We got some grill marks on it. So we're gonna take them over here to the grill, all of our steaks. Then we're not gonna touch it. Everybody goes, they wanna cut into it. They wanna eat it right then, but you wanna let it rest. The one step you do wanna do at this point is 
Right now, what we like to do is seal it in with a little bit of butter. Just kind of rub it over, adds it. Butter's just got a huge amount of flavor. And just seal that in and let that just melt into the steak. If you want to, you can take a piece of foil if you're outside, tenant. You want to let that rest for about half the time that you've been cooking it. We cook these to about 125 degrees, which is medium rare. If you want to cook it a little bit more, 140 is medium. Beyond that, it's just going to check for doneness. So, um, but if you cook these for 10 or 15 minutes, anywhere from five to seven minutes resting time, let those juices go back into the meat and not run all over your platter. Okay, we're ready. Our meat's rested. We're ready to cut into it and see how we've done. We'll take our porterhouse and again, you could serve this whole, or you can cut it for your guests. We're gonna take a bite. Oh man, fantastic. It's the best. So, let's try the rib steak. Again, you can see a little bit of pink in the center. Again, it's always good to have really sharp knives. You won't cut yourself with a really sharp knife. Hmm, incredible. Follow these steps, you'll make a perfect steak every time.